three, two, one. Release, release, release. Fire, fire. You are watching the world's latest commercial space launch. One week ago this morning, Virgin Galactic, which bills itself as the space line for Earth, sent two pilots and four other employees into space. And it says the final evaluation flight before carrying paying customers into space as well. The company founded by Sir Richard Branson last carried passengers, including Branson, almost two years ago. Since then, it's been modifying its spaceship and the giant plane that carries it up to launch altitude so the company can move into full commercial service, planning to carry passengers to space every month. Now, two of the employees who were selected to evaluate the flight are now astronauts, Jamila Gilbert and Christopher Huey, and they're joining us live to tell us if the flight passed their test. We thank you so much for coming on the show. Can uh, Jamila, will you tell us your experience? Did it meet your expectations? It surpassed my expectations. Thank you. Good morning. It has been, uh, you know, one week ago today, we were having this unbelievable experience. And I knew it was going to be difficult to put into words, but uh, I think <laughs> being completely awestruck, uh, even in a zero G environment, having to pick your job off the, the, the <laughs> floor of the spaceship, it was incredible. It was unbelievably incredible. Well, I love that you are still smiling ear to ear. So it must have been <laughs> that good to, for a week later for you to still be having that reaction. Um, Chris, Virgin Galactic sends customers to suborbital space. Can you tell us how high that is and what does that allow you to actually experience while you're up there? Probably not everything that, that people are thinking. Sure. So uh, suborbital space basically just means we don't orbit around the planet. It's we go up and we come down. Um, NASA considers space uh, about 50 miles, 80 kilometers up above the surface of the Earth. And what that allows you to experience is an incredible view, uh, several minutes of weightlessness and just the, the best experience that I've ever had in my entire life. Is there anything you'd compare the experience to? Uh, it's funny you ask because I have a hard time comparing it to anything, but uh, the the closest thing I can think of is like being in a very very high performance roller coaster oh. under the rocket motor ride, and then the zero g experience. The best explanation I have is just like going outside on a perfect weather day where there's like no temperature. You just don't feel anything. You just you're just there. Yeah. You know, that's amazing. Jamila, I want to ask you, though, people are going to pay almost a half million dollars to be able to do this. I know, you know, I've done I've done stories with other astronauts and people who have gone up into space, and it's all about, you know, just kind of the wonder and, and you know, discovering new things. For you, was there the weightlessness aspect of it, as Chris is talking about? Was it seeing the planet differently? Was it just your curiosity? What What propelled you to want to do this? I think you're saying all the right words and words that I've been expressing and trying to just wrap around, uh, wrap my arms around, wrap my heads around and to, to speak to my family about it. But um, for me, it was just looking at our home planet. And yeah. when you really think about how many people have have lived in all of human existence and yeah. all of time and have not had the opportunity to see our home planet, I mean, I, it, it took my breath away. Uh, and I could not look away. It was like a, it was like a pull. I can't hardly describe. It was like my I couldn't look away and stop gazing at its brilliance. I think that's such a perfect way to put it. I always say I love experiences where I feel small because uh, in some way it just makes you realize how much you know how much greater the world really is and how we're all connected to one another. Um, Absolutely. Chris, Absolutely. Space flight is humbling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you need that, I think. Um, so if I can come up with a half million dollars, maybe I'll do it. Um, Chris, you're the engineer. Your spaceship folds in half, we're told, when it's up there. Can you explain, you know, to all of us lay people how that works? What's this about? Sure. So uh, our spaceship folds in half. We call it the feather system. And uh, that's one of the novel things about the spaceship is uh, it it really helps our reentry. So coming back into the atmosphere in a stable and controlled manner. So the when you fold the spaceship in half, it kind of approximates the shape of a capsule that we're used to seeing in like the Mercury, Gemini and Apollo mission errors in like the 50s and 60s. And so it's an aerodynamically stable shape. And all that means is that uh, the ship always wants to come in the appropriate configuration um, and slows the vehicle down on reentry.
Um, so it's just a safer way to come in. Yeah, I think what I love about this too is that you know we all have these ideas in our mind of how things are supposed to go, and then as we're developing these technologies and seeing these types of missions and things happen, you know, to see the technology evolve, it's it's all mind blowing, right? Um, on, real quick before I let you go, on a scale of one to ten, Jamila, rate it. Uh, how how you said it? It only goes up to ten. Yeah, <laughs> it only goes up to ten. So I'm taking ten. <laughs> Higher than that, okay. absolutely. Chris? <laughs> 11. Uh, okay. Definitely, this is Spinal Tap uh, all the way. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you both for being here. It's really a pleasure talking to both of you, and I'm, I'm so glad for both of you you had the experience. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Paul, you know, we've talked about this.